Hey there, it's Terry from The Quarter Acre. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I have decided to share with you some of my upcoming like picks for curriculum for this year. We're changing things up a little bit. Some things are staying the same, some things are gonna be new. So let's go ahead and dive in. This first video is going to be my picks for my daughter's fourth grade year. So here we go, let's dive in. Okay, so we are in our homeschool room here, um, and we're gonna go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna start with which curriculum we're using. We are gonna be using Masterbooks, and we've used Masterbooks since we started homeschooling. Uh, this past year, what we did is we hit just about the halfway point, and I realized that it was starting to move ahead, and we had just you know, really gotten into multiplication and multiplying like 29 times 3 and um, working on division and fractions and it was already like moving ahead and I was like that's a little bit fast I feel like for me addition subtraction multiplication and division are the math tools that I use every single day um, you know there's a hundred people coming to the party each table seats eight how many people are we gonna put at each table um, you know do dividing things and everything coming up with price per ounce at the grocery store like fractions for baking like these are the the core things I believe so she had worked a year ahead and was started starting level four as a third grader so we stopped halfway through and we moved on to a different um, curriculum that was basically just a workbook that just really drilled multiplication and um, kind of simple division until she really had practiced it enough every day that it was like, it's a strong skill now. So now we're gonna dive back into the book um, and we're gonna be picking up at lesson, I think it's lesson 14. So we got like 14 weeks into school before we stopped and went hardcore on multiplication and division. So what I love about the master books series one, it's Christian. It's awesome. Um, and it's Christian, and it has this cool thing where at the beginning of each chapter, there's a story. So this one, um, you follow these two twins, and now they're adopted siblings, and which I love because we are a family built um, through adoption um, and biological children. So it works really well for us to see this awesome family um, where the kids joined via, you know, biology and via adoption. Um, so that's really cool for us. It tells a cool story and introduces the math principle and then goes ahead and has the practice and review, or not, not review, but the practice pages. Um, so that's, you know, they're introducing remainders and things. And so it gives them one to two pages per day. Sometimes it's just a one page exercise. Sometimes it's a two page exercise. Uh, but never more than two pages per day. And so it's good in that you can supplement and add to it if you need to. Um, we hadn't had to do that before, but you know, like I said, we stopped halfway through last year and said, you know what, she's already ahead. Let's just go ahead and stay here and make sure she gets multiplication and division um, and adding really long numbers and subtracting really long numbers with the borrowing and carrying, carrying, not carrowing. Um, so yeah, and I love how much it goes into measurements because that is something like, honestly, until I started homeschooling my kids, I could not tell you how many pints are in a gallon, how many cups in a quart, any of that. Like none of that, like that was an Ask Google every single time. And now, um, thanks to Masterbooks, it wasn't this level. I think it was one or two levels back. Um, they have Mr. Gallon and he's still hanging up show you Mr. Gallon like see right over there that explains like cups pints quarts etc in like an easy visual okay, let me get you squared back up so this is what we're gonna be using as our as our curriculum now we do math five days a week um, but not the math book at five days a week so we do four days of math they do math and language arts every day so four days of math out of the book and then 
Fridays are fun Fridays. So we do different math activities, different math games, um, etc. I have some other tools here that we use and we incorporate sometimes. So this is a little counting poppet. So sometimes um, we work with this. We've got a multiplication chart poppet. Um, reminiscent. I had the one when I was a kid that like you push down the little squares. It showed you the answer. I don't know if you guys had that. But this kind of reminded me a little bit of that. So it's just kind of a fun, fun way to deal with that. Definitely love our abacus. Like I would have never, ever thought that having an abacus would be cool. But it really is amazing to be able to visually show, um, show the kids and to not have little tiny things that you have to pick up. We have the place value village that we built as part of the lower levels for uh, master books math. And it's great. And I really enjoy the principle of it and, and using it. But every time we get it out, there are beans all over my house. So I love that the abacus <laughs> is self-contained. So I digress. Musical multiplication, we'll be continuing with this this year. Um, I get these stuck in my head, beware. Um, I have to figure out, because my computer crashed that I downloaded these on, so I'm gonna have to reach out to the Good and Beautiful and be like, hey, how do I access these again? I might check my email to see if there's a link that's still good in there, um, but I need to, uh, to get that, because that's nice to just have playing in the background. I wish they had it on CD, because we do um, song school Spanish, and so we have our CD player there, and it would be nice to just be able to pop in the CD and not have to start the computer up and all that. So the good and beautiful, if you're ever watching this, please, please, the CD would be awesome. Or make it where we can access it on our phones. All right, I've got my own little, first is my good and the beautiful skip counting chart. Um, that's free on their website. We don't use their math program just because Masterbooks has been working for us. Um, it's There's a blank one and then there's one they have filled out. Um, but I went ahead and, you know, just kind of wrote down the numbers counting by nines, counting by sixes, counting by fours, counting by sevens, counting by fives, counting by twos, counting by threes, counting by tens. So we definitely have tens and fives. It's so easy. I don't know why those just seem to click with kiddos easier. We've definitely got those, the twos, the fives, the tens, but it does make it a lot easier when you're doing your multiplication to be able to skip count by other numbers. So we practice those occasionally. And then I found this fun book. It was actually donated to my son's book barn project. And it's got Lots of different, you know, math tricks and games and things like that. It's pretty old school. You can always tell the old school ones by the little pocket in the front. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you know what this little pocket is for. There are entire generations that will be watching this video, um, homeschool parents that have never, never experienced the pocket. So let me know um, if you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is a, a discard book. But it's fun because it's got lots of little math games. It's got slide rule for addition and subtraction, the circular slide rule, knotted paper, make a belt from a 5 by 7 card, uh, more digital computations, still more digital computations, circles and corners, amazing division, lazy trickster, etc. So it's kind of fun. Um, and I'm excited to see um, what fun activities we get out of that. Um, we also have Tanagrams, which I loved as a kid and my kids love. And let me tell you, sometimes when they are like at each other's throats and they are bickering, I will, I will just pull out the Tanagrams and be like, this is what we're doing for math today. Um, you guys each have your own little sheet to do, but we're going to do this as our math activity. And they just sit quietly and like, of these shapes on the cards like and I don't know there's just something soothing about it and I wonder looking back like hmm is that what my teachers were doing like was the class out of control and they were like I need just 10 minutes of shh and so they got out the tanagrams 
I don't know. Um, and then I've got a bunch of manipulatives that I keep in this little um, tin lunchbox in our math deal. So this is from Timu. I know some people, like it's very controversial. Either you're for Timu or you're against Timu. Um, I decided to give it a try and one of the first things I ordered were these for this year and I absolutely love them because I tried to order some off of Amazon and they came and they didn't quite work. They were the blocks that you kind of click together, um, almost like big Legos that we kind of had when we were going to school back in the day, but they didn't, if you took two sixteenths and replaced the one eighth with two sixteenths, it wasn't the same size. Like it didn't make for the same size one hole, you know, like it, which drove me nuts. Like if you're going to do it, do it right. So here the circles are all the same, um, all the same size and you can add up to create a full circle. So let me, I'm making one down here. You can see there that it makes an actual hole instead of um, like not equaling up. So like if I tried to take out one of those sixteenths and put an eighth in, like it's not going to fit. It's going to be all funky and wonky and sorry for that terrible, terrible camera work. Um, I'm a homeschool mom, not a cinematographer. So love these. Got them off of Timu. We're going to be practicing with those and I think it's just a great visual um, for them to be able to really conceptualize how fractions work. Let's see. Then I have, I've got my money flashcards. So I really enjoy these. I keep a pitcher, a little white pitcher full of uh, pocket change that comes through the laundry. And then they get these cards and they get to purchase um, the cards and then tell me how much things cost. So like you'll see the ice cream here. Um, is on one side with the picture of the coins. This is great in the very beginning when they're trying to figure out what the coins look like. But we use it now that they know what the coins look like. I will read it, put your coins on the spaces to equal 25 cents. And so they have to figure out how in three coins to make 25 cents. And then when they do, they get to flip it over if they get it correct and they get their little ice cream cone. And there's pretzels and balloons and different things like that. It also came with a time card. So, you know, how to make, you show them this, you need to make 245 on the clock. Um, and then it gives a little explanation of it and what it should look like on the back. And speaking of clocks, we opted for this guy, the classic clock. It's a little bit smaller, which I like. The bigger ones are way more expensive and they just take up more room. So we've got this along with it. We got these fun little dice and so you can you roll and whatever time you make then you get to make that on the clock. Another fun thing that came with it was this clock that you can use dry erase on. So I can write a time and then they can do that or I can have one kid working on one and one kid working on the other because um, I do do some tutoring so my 15 year old he doesn't need to do this anymore but if I've got multiple tutoring kids these all came together um, and then the flashcards were separate and you can find those on Amazon I've got little printable multiplication cards I also have I love these I got these on teachers pay teachers I don't remember who did them but I'm sure you can just look them up they're fidget spinner um, multiplication fact um, and division fact cards. So, and then there's addition and subtraction as well. So I think these are the addition for my daughter from when she was little. I just kept them in case any of my tutoring kids need them. Um, so there's those. I really like them for the multiplication and division. It really creates an awesome visual to like conceptualize how these numbers are related you know, 7 times 3 is 21, 21 divided by 3 is 7, 21 divided by 7 is 3, like it, it really helps them to concrete those two facts together, because I'm always telling my kids, multiplication is just division backwards, division is just multiplication backwards. Um, these fun little uh, time puzzles came 
with this set. Um, so you're looking at the time and then finding the corresponding piece and they click together. And they don't click together if you get the wrong ones, which I like. Oh, there's more of those fidget spinner flashcards. I like to put them on a little ring. Um, and we have a mastered ring and an unmastered ring. Let's see, what else do we have here? I've also got these little time cards to practice on. I really love the telling time um, bit because there are so many kids that can't read a clock anymore. Um, it's kind of sad. Oh, those are the same multiplication. Here's the multiplication facts. Um, I love putting all my stuff on little rings. Super handy. Um, so other than my tanagrams, which are packed away, and my place value village, that's pretty much it. I have a few math games, um, multiplication fat games and, and things like that um, that we play. We also play cards. So um, Uno, you know, and we'll play, um, what other games do we play? Oh, any game where there's like, um, Adding involved is fun. Um, we do go fish and then we make them add up. You know, we play greater than, less than with war, and we've got the fraction uh, war game, which is a lot of fun. And yeah, that's what we're doing for math in the fourth grade this year. If you have any awesome resources, let me know down in the comment section below. We're getting ready to dive into uh, remainders, which I don't think she's going to have a big problem with. I think that's going to be pretty common sense for her. If you've used this curriculum, what did you love about it? What did you not love? I'm looking at potentially getting to have a second book that corresponds with this, um, with like practice pages. Um, and I'm wondering, I have to look and see if our charter will pay for it. They won't pay for this one because there's Christian stuff in it. But what I do like is that the majority of the practice pages don't have anything Christian on them. So we can still turn them in um, as a work sample. We, we just can't turn in any of the story pages, which is fine. There's no work to be done on the story pages anyways. So... Let me know if you have a better fourth grade math curriculum that you just absolutely love and recommend in the comment section down below. Thanks and have a great day.